E-P-I Air. Welcome to the EPI Air 2 installation video. Some commonly needed tools will be cable cutter, drill bits, concrete bits, electric drill or hammer drill, an end wrench of a half inch or 13 millimeters, ladder, nut drivers, 5 16 or 9 millimeter, pliers, punch, hammer, pipe cutter, small flat and Phillips screwdriver, socket, half inch or 13 millimeter with extension and ratchet, typical flat and Phillips screwdrivers, utility knife, vice grips, voltmeter, wire stripper, and wire crimper. First, determine where to install the Corona pipe lines. A Corona line ideally energizes a 10 foot wide lane, which is typically centered over 10 feet of pen space. Determine the best location to install Corona pipe drop line supports. Evenly center the Corona pipe over the pig space. During operation, the Corona pipe must be at least 6 inches away from any objects. Look for obstacles, such as ceiling vents, lights, feed lines, etc., that will prevent the Corona pipe from rising up and out of the way of the workers. A fully lifted Corona pipe will be 8.5 to 9.5 inches below the ceiling. Decide the best location to install the pull handle. The location must be strong enough to support the weight of a Corona pipe attached to the winch. Decide the best location to install the motorized winch. Add lumber to the location and attach the winch to that lumber. Make sure there is enough room to avoid obstacles when the cable is in operation. For easy access, it's best to locate the winch next to the main door to the room. Assemble the winch and bracket using the motorized winch assembly. Add the snatch block to the cable and attach the winch housing. This reduces the speed of the winch and increases the lifting capacity. Bolt the bracket to the winch using the provided hardware. Now, mount the winch to the installed lumber using the provided hardware. The Corona pipe must be supported every 12 feet with a pipe insulator. A 1 and an eighth inch eye leg hook support and a 7 8 inch pulley must be installed every 12 feet at each support location. When installing EPI air in tunnel ventilated barns, keep the last pipe insulator at least 8 feet from the fans to reduce condensation on the insulator during the winter months. The first support must be within 4 feet of the front of the Corona pipe run. The last support must be within 4 feet of the end of the Corona pipe run. Insulators will be 8 feet apart if ceiling rafters are 8 feet apart. The 7 8 inch pulley can support 40 pounds. In the front of the barn, where the cable will run towards the pull handle, use the larger 1 and 7 8 inch pulley. The larger pulley must be supported with a 2 and 3 quarter inch eye leg hook. The pulleys must be mounted straight in line with the Corona supports. The 1 and 7 8 inch pulley can support 175 pounds. If the weight exceeds 175 pounds, a heavier pulley and hardware must be used. If the pull handle is mounted on the wall, such as at waist level by a door, install a 1 and 7 8 inch pulley directly above the spool into a solid object that can support the weight. Cables attached to the winches must have a clear and open path to the Corona pipe. A cable rubbing on other items is unacceptable. Starting at the far end of the barn, furthest from the winch, pull the cable to the pull handle, in line with where the Corona pipe will be suspended allowing enough cable to turn at the end of the wall towards the pull handle. The cable provides lift for the Corona pipe runs. Pull the cable through the eyes of the pulley supports. Do not allow the cable to rub on other objects. Once enough cable is pulled for the furthest Corona pipe run, cut an extra 10 feet of cable and tie or clamp the last to the end Corona pipe support. There must be enough distance between the handle and the pulley to allow for maximum travel of the Corona pipe runs. The winch must be able to pull the Corona pipe runs all of the way up. Pull the cable through the eyes of the pulley supports. Tie or clamp the end of the cable to the last or furthest Corona point support, or attach a dead weight to remove cable sag. Allow five extra feet of cable. Do not allow the cable to rub on other objects. Allow enough cable movement for the Corona pipe runs to travel the maximum up and down. Check that all cables, clamps, screws, bolts, legs, and other fasteners are secure before moving on to the next step. Bring the Corona pipe into the room, female side first, and assemble it from the far side of the room, below the support installed on the ceiling. The Corona points are sharp. Wear protective gloves if desired. 
The corona points on the point of the pipe must be perfectly aligned in a straight line. The swedge joints must be pushed together to the maximum. Each swedge joint must have two self-tapping screws for maximum rigidity. If needed, use a small punch, make two small dents into the pipe at the location of the self-tapping screws. The dents will help guide the screws. Take care not to bend or damage the corona points welded to the pipes. Cut the pipe to length so the corona pipe runs the entire length of the pig space. Allow at least one foot of space between the end of the corona pipe run and the wall. Leave at least eight feet of space between the last pipe insulator and fans, such as at the end of a tunnel ventilated barn. Repeat these steps for each corona pipe run in a room. Put pipe caps on the end of each corona pipe run. Now center the corona pipe runs over the pig space. Take care not to damage the corona points welded to the pipe. Cut the appropriate length of rope to attach the corona pipe runs to the pull cable at each support location. The appropriate length will allow for the maximum travel up or down of each corona pipe run. Tie a simple knot at the end of each rope. Slip the untied end of each rope through the loop of the pipe insulator up to the knot. Attach the pipe insulator's circular end to the pipe. Each insulator should be attached to the pipe directly below the supports. Turn the pipe insulator so the clip side of the ring faces towards the pulley. The knot of the rope on the pipe insulator must be on the side of the insulator that does not touch the pulley. The small notch on the bottom of the pipe insulator should grab the corona point spine. Do not clip the insulator closed until certain no further adjustments are needed. Once clipped closed, they cannot be adjusted or reused. Slip the untied end of the ropes through the support pulleys and tie a simple knot at the end. Orient the ropes through the pulleys to allow the corona pipe runs to be lifted by the winch. Attach the ropes to the pull cable using a curtain thumb nut. Tension the rope and the pipe insulator. Start at the rope nearest the winch. Slide the thumb nut towards the winch. At the furthest, last support of the corona pipe run, attach the rope to the cable, remove the weight and trim the cable. The cable should not extend through the pulley. Test the lift winch by running the lines up and down to their maximum. Motion must be smooth and easy. Adjust the lines so they are all level and reach the same height at once. Once all the lines are level, use a hanging ball to mark 50 inches above the floor. Hang the ball from a rope attached to the ceiling. The ball should be approximately 6 inches from the corona pipe. During operation, the corona pipe should be just below the ball level. To gain maximum vertical clearance, if the corona pipe is pulled all of the way up to the ceiling, make sure the pipe insulators are not touching the pulleys. This will prevent damage during use. When all of the pipe insulators are touching the support pulleys, the corona pipe runs are adjusted to the maximum height and each corona pipe line will move in unison with each other. When using a motorized winch, set the limit switch to avoid damage to the EPI air system. Prevent the winch from pulling the pipe insulator into the pulleys. The winch is automatically stopped when the snatch block pushes the lever. Do not rely on the limit switch during normal operation. Run the high voltage wire to the corona pipe nearest the power supply high voltage switch. There must be enough slack in the high voltage wire to allow for maximum travel up and down. The high voltage wire cannot touch any object as it drops from the ceiling to the corona pipe. The high voltage wire touching the energized corona pipe runs must be covered with a 4 foot section of silicone tube. The tubes must be sealed with silicone cock and zip tied snugly. This will prevent water from filling the tube. Repeat this process for each end of the high voltage wire touching the corona pipe runs. Attach the high voltage wire to the corona pipe runs. Strip a 3 quarter inch section of the insulation from the end of the high voltage wire. Twist the strands together. Fold the strands back over the high voltage wire and slip a ring terminal over all. Crimp the terminal to the high voltage wire. Repeat the process for each end of the high voltage wire being attached to the corona pipe runs. Use a self-tapping screw to attach the ring terminals to the corona pipe runs. 
The ring terminal should be at least 4 inches from the end of the corona pipe run. Secure the high voltage wire with two cable ties. Cover the ring terminals and high voltage wire ends with silicone caulk. It is very important that you ground all equipment. Please be sure to follow these steps carefully. Make sure to ground all equipment in the barn including feed sensors, temperature probes, humidity probes, and alarm probes. Equipment suspended by ropes or hanging on plastic pulleys is typically not grounded. Ungrounding equipment will build a static charge. When touched, the equipment will become discharged. It is of the utmost importance to ground the temperature sensor and other sensors that are connected to the computer-controlled ventilation. Ground all unused, cut, or abandoned sensor wires present in the controller. Failure to properly ground the sensor may result in a damaged computer. These probes often work at low voltage and do not have a ground connection. If a ground wire is present for each sensor, connect all to an earth ground. If no ground wire is provided, connect the negative pole of each sensor to an earth ground. Do both if possible. If a sensor has a metal tip and you cannot clearly determine that it is grounded, attach a ground wire securely to the tip with a hose clamp and ground the tip back to the sensor ground or earth ground. Cover feed sensors with a Faraday cage. Durable foil tape works well. And add a wire to the earth ground. Wrap the foil with electrical tape. If you are unsure that a sensor or piece of equipment has been grounded, as a precaution, disconnect the sensor wires from the computer but not from the earth ground prior to plugging in the EPI system. Measure the static charge on the sensor wires before and after plugging in the EPI system. The measured voltage should be the same if properly grounded. If OK, reconnect sensor wires and test sensors. After grounding all sensors connecting and grounding the automation wire while the power supply is plugged in, make sure the sensors work and that no static charge is building up on the sensor wires or tip. In some cases, if the sensors are improperly grounded, arcing can be heard from inside the computer box. In other cases, an alarm may sound. At this point, it is possible that the computer is damaged. Baumgartner and Vironics Incorporated is not responsible for install errors, such as, but not limited to, improper or inadequate grounding of sensors and equipment. Baumgartner and Vironics Incorporated is not liable for unforeseen impacts of ionization, on equipment in barns or rooms. In this section of the video we will discuss installing a high voltage switch. Use caution when mounting the high voltage switch. Stay six feet away from any controllers to avoid interference when possible. Install the high voltage switch near the main door to the room that it will control. Use self-tapping tech screws or wood screws to mount the box to the wall outside the room. Run a high voltage wire from the high voltage power supply to the hot pole of the switch. Run the high voltage wire from the hot pole of the switch to the next high voltage switch or, if it is in the last switch of a series, fill the extra channel in with a plastic washer and dielectric grease. Run the high voltage wire from the cold pole of the high voltage switch into the room to the nearest corona pipe run. Refer to steps 34 and 35 in the EPI Air 2 installation manual as needed. Ground the high voltage switch using the green wire coming out of the switch. Attach the ground wire to the metal wall or the main electrical ground in the room, barn, or farm. The ground must have an earth ground or direct ground contact with the power supply energizing the room or switch. All gaps between plastic washers, plastic nuts, and square rod must be filled completely with dielectric grease. Failure to seal the gaps will result in leaking energy inside the switch. Now we will install the power supply. Choose a location to mount the power supply. The location must have AC power. Do not use a ground fault outlet. The location should be reasonably close to the room with EPI air installed. It is best to install the power supply in a hall or office. The location should be close to an AC electrical ground. The location must be out of reach of livestock. A strong earth ground must be nearby, such as a grounded rod pounded 8 feet into the earth or certified code AC ground. Mount the power supply using four screws. The power supply must be securely mounted to the wall. Connect the nine pin plug from the computer into the power supply. 
run high voltage wire from the nearest corona pipe run or high voltage switch to the power supply. Leave about two extra feet of high voltage wire at the power supply. Strip a quarter inch of high voltage wire, twist the strands together, and insert end into the hole labeled HV output. Push the high voltage wire up into the power supply until it hits a solid end. Keep pushing the high voltage wire until you feel it crumple. Then tighten the strain relief snugly on the high voltage wire. If the high voltage wire is scored or nicked, it must be replaced and cannot be repaired. Attach a ground wire to the ground stud of the power supply and connect it to the AC electrical ground. There are two ground studs on each power supply. Attach a ground wire to the ground stud of the power supply and attach it to the ceiling or other metal material that connects all rooms energized by the power supply. Install the non-automation caps in the 5-pin connector. All computer equipment, controllers, and other sensitive equipment must be grounded properly prior to energizing the power supply. Also, ferret collars must be installed on probe wires prior to energizing the power supply. Add ferrite collars to the high voltage wire and computer wire. Now plug in the power supply. Once the power supply is energized, the LED display will light up. The EPI air system is now cleaning the air. Observe and record the hour meter, KV level, and MA level. BEI has certified installers that can assist at any time throughout the installation process. Contact our office at 320-523-1644. E-P-I-Air.